So, someone talked uh, of Plato once as uh, the craftsman of all the ideas uh, of the Western world. And uh, the idea we will talk about this evening makes no exception. This is the Timaeus, uh, and this is his powerful idea. I'll, he said that the whole world is a living being endowed with a soul and intelligence. The world is a single, visible, living entity containing all other living entities, which by their nature are all related. In this mesmerizing passage behind me, the platonic idea of the soul of the words appears for the first time on the horizon of the Western, of the Western thought and as if influenced by the theme of the Timaeus, which is methamticosis, the reincarnation of the soul, this idea reincarnates under many names and many shapes over the centuries as the anima mundi of the Stoics, for example, down to Imagine by John Lennon, which could be thought of as a hymn of the soul of the word, sung by every living being through the mere circumstance of being alive. If in the humanistic age the word has had a soul, as we have seen, in the scientific age the, the word had first and foremost a brain. So the soul became a superorganism, and a superorganism is made of independent individuals collaborating with such proximity and intensity that they become a null encompassing organism quantitatively superior to the sums, to the sum of all its parts, and qualitatively different from each one of them. So uh, this, this brain was also called the word brain, uh, a definition by a visionary writer, H.G. Wells, uh, where each neuron is a man and each synapsis is one of the many bonds that tie a man to another man. It was called the human hive. It was called the nosphere, a sort of hyperuranic atmosphere of the thoughts surrounding the planet. It was called in many names, but well, you certainly know it as collective intelligence, which is the name by which it is now widely known and discussed. But then, despite all these names, all these past and present names, uh, collective intelligence has always existed. Collective intelligence is as old as man itself. It is as earthly as Homo sapiens, uh, and it appears some 13,000 uh, 13, years ago. The first of the many names of collective intelligence, the most sacred and secret of this name, is language. The collective language is the highest form of collective intelligence. Think of language as a gigantic living organism evolving through time together with uh, the body of its words and their relations. Think of language as an infinite and prehensile mind that collects and connects everything men know about themselves and about the world around them. Think of the etymology of words as the welt and schaung of the collective mind. Think of the modification of the original meaning of words as the incessant changes of the thought of the collective mind. Language is a relentless God in a perpetual recreation of the word. This omnipotent collective intelligence, which is the language of an entire population, has actually created more than any single poet, more than any single author, all the works, all the, the literary works of ancient times, which are actually collective works of art. Think, of course, of Iliad and uh, Odyssey. Think of the Bible. Think of uh, Gargantua and Pantagruel. Think of uh, the Chanson de Geste, Beowulf, uh, the Nordic um, saga of uh, Kenninger. Um, 
think of anything. It's think of the Roman theater. Hmm? Consequentially, we might imagine ancient poetry as a technique, as a technique to conjure up and control this capricious god of language to finally tame the enormous and dangerous superorganism. And poets are exactly this. Poets are the patient tamers of the uh, wild beast of language. They are magic hypnotizers of the collective mind. Matrix is the echoing labyrinth where the poet tries to trap the minotaur of language. And rhymes are the chains. In the beginning, every poet uh, uses the most simple and common technique uh, to impose order on chaos. This technique is the list. That's where everything starts from. The list is the irresistible structure of poetry. It is the unbreakable chain. Because in the list, the word is again name and number at the same time. It is counting and recounting as it was in the beginning. Uh, all languages show that counting and recounting started at the very beginning as one and the same thing. Think of Erzalen in German, of raconter in French, of narrar in Spanish, and tell in English all had originally the meaning not only of telling a story, narrating a story, but of counting, enumerating. Can you still hear the, the, the Latin word enumeratio, enumeration, into narratio, narration? So the poet starts to count and recount, to enumerate and narrate the Iliad, the very foundation of Western literature starts with a long list of ships, with a catalogue of ships. So the poet starts to count and recount, and the language obeys. If once there were as many collective minds as there were languages, nowadays there is just one collective intelligence, and this is the internet, of course, and we are going, possibly, toward only one language, one global language. Let's call it one digital koine, one digital common language, becoming more unique and more united, more vast and more various, merging together horizontally all the national languages and vertically all the different ways of expression, blending writing and drawing, speaking and filming and playing all together. And it is as, through the screens of our electronic devices connected to the internet, sometimes it is as if we saw collective intelligence as through a glass, darkly. Collective intelligence in modern times has been the, the, the king maker of history. The 20th century one day might be studied as a long and variously successful attempt at channeling and exploiting this force which is still unknown possibly, which is collective intelligence, and how to use it in different fields. In the field of politics, first and foremost, what is democracy after all? but the self-crowning of the collective mind. But then, in, in regard to politics, th thinks also of the participatory constitution of Iceland. Uh, of Iceland, which was written collectively by tens of thousands of citizens. In economy, the stock exchange with its open outcry market has always been the application of collective intelligence to economy. But the, now the modern stock exchange, 
with its silent millions of traders, is the new market of a global village that never sleeps and never shouts. In the field of knowledge, the same H.G. Wells, who coined the expression word brain, also said how then current encyclopedias failed to adapt to the, both the growing increase in recorded knowledge and the expansion of people requiring more information, information that was accurate, that was reliable, information that was easily accessible. In 1936, Wells wanted more and more people to participate to the collection and production of information. In 1936, he wanted the word brain to create what he called a permanent word encyclopedia. A depot, he called it so, a depot where knowledge and ideas are received, sorted, summarized, digested, clarified and compared. Isn't this a perfect description, 70 years before it was started, of Wikipedia? And in the field of technology, collective intelligence has created Linux, for example, and a number of open source programs, endless uh, open source programs. So uh, there are all these fields that have been... Uh, that have been exploited, where collective intelligence has been applied, politics, economy, knowledge, technology, we still have one major field where probably collective intelligence might be applied, or I should say reapplied. And this field, of course, is the art and literature in particular. So the global hamlet is the first attempt at creating a global author, at applying collective intelligence to literature and the arts in general. It is the first great experiment of a people's edition of a literary work ever made. It is thousands of people translating, annotating, illustrating William Shakespeare Hamlet through the internet in many languages. The project will be open to everyone and free for all. Through an innovative website, everyone will be able to contribute with texts, images, sounds, videos, both classical and original, while a team of editors will constantly collect and select all the contributions, assembling them all together in an unlimited commentary of the unlimited poem. The Global Hamlet is a living book, growing and transforming itself over the years, constantly translated in different ways and renewed by interpretation, adding up to interpretation as the circles of a, of a tree. It is a word renovating the humanistic metaphor for culture. Culture from, comes from Latin cultura, which means cultivation. A cultivated man was a man who cultivated his memory, his brain, his soul. Uh, with, and now the global hamlet is men and women cultivating, attending to the care of a text that has already nourished generations and generations. The global hamlet is actually the crowdsourcing of literature. It is a monographic Wikipedia of a single book constantly edited, annotated, and illustrated by its own readers that are also their own, their, its own authors. In, it's a book in continuous metamorphosis with the print publication merely being the photograph of one moment in time. It is a babelic Linux codec of literature simultaneously written by thousands and thousands of programmers of the world. It is drawing a pair of moustache on the text that has been called the Mona Lisa of literature with a fine brush moved by the ends of the word. The Global Hamlet in its name is of course a tribute and a reference to Shakespeare Globe Theatre and to his idea that all the word is a stage 
an idea that has never been true as today, probably. But Global Hamlet also refers to the global village becoming author and actor and producing his collective works of art. And this is a literary format, the first prototype in a, libra in a library of collecting classics, in a catalog of collecting works of art. And all this collective work of art will be not only global, so extended in space, but also everlasting, extended in time, generation after generation. The global hamlet wants to be the stream of the collective consciousness. Thank you very much. <laughs>